Hey everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. So in my last video, I may or may not have made a few assumptions, like, oh, say, everybody's played Legend of Zelda Link to the Past before. Um, yeah, so I I'm gonna try to limit the spoilers, unless I'm talking about something particularly about a certain gameplay element or something like that. Uh, I'm not just gonna randomly spoil shit all over the place, just because apparently there are some people who haven't played the game, and why ruin it for them? Unless it's really, really fun. Anyway, here is the Elder Sahara Sharala Sharala, which is very easy to say. And he's gonna expand just a tiny bit on the uh, Master Sword here. I love this choice. Considering most of these choices are BS anyways, it's kind of funny to see one which just recognizes it and gives you two different options which mean yes. Uh, the pots above contain hearts if you need them. Nice for a little recharge if you get hurt in the area or if you're on your way back from the uh, palace here. These guys are Armo statues. As you can see, you move in towards them, they come to life. They're pretty vicious when you think about it compared to the other enemies. There are uh, four hits, I believe, which is... that's a lot. Nothing else is like that. Of course, the boomerang does help make short work of them, but whatever. They're pretty decent. Plus, they hop around a lot, which is kind of funny. Another blue soldier here. And here we are at the Eastern Palace. The Eastern Palace, of course, is our first real dungeon, so it's going to have quite a few... Uh, I mean, it is a newbie area, so you have to give it some uh, leniency. As you can see, it's introducing us here to two different types of switches. And we've got one of these little... Oop, did that wrong. Got a little section you got to avoid the balls. And every now and then, they throw a huge fucking one that you just can't avoid. Unless you use the little walls to the side, or you're fast enough, I guess. Anyway, over here, got some money. Pretty decent amount there, too. And then you can either hop off and head back through the ball pit, or you can head back up here and just walk around, which is probably the safer and smarter thing to do. Also, on this side, I have no idea what's over here, because I never go this way. And it's a bunch of enemies. Hey, I got a red rupee out of it, so it can't be that bad. Anyway, these uh, skeleton guys, these are Stalfos. The uh, blue Stalfos will continually jump away when you attack them. And later on, we'll meet some different colored ones. Here we have a, just a normal antique fairy, whatever. And this is the reason to actually go this way if you care. Uh, this is the map. I don't think I've ever actually gotten the map in this dungeon just because it's completely useless. But whatever. Cool. Anyway, we're gonna head the, to the left here and actually continue the rest of the dungeon. You know, the way normal people go. more blue Stolfos. We're not gonna... Uh, I don't know. Kind of having fun killing him. The boomerang doesn't really seem to do anything, and it de definitely doesn't kill him. Yeah, whatever. And you're actually supposed to go to this middle section to get them to spawn. For some reason, heading down below doesn't seem to do dick, so, you know, whatever. And like pretty much everything else, it's easier to use... Any weapon that is not your sword to kill a Stalfos. Um, the pots, eventually you'll get the treasure of this palace, which I will spoil because we're about to get it anyways. Uh, but a lot of things like that will help deal with Stalfos better than just swinging your sword. If you can use a pot, that's a, that's a pretty basic rule. If you can use a pot, use the pot. Also, here's the telepathy tiles. 
uh, shaped like the Triforce. When you talk to them, they'll give you hints. Yeah, it's great. This is basically the hint on how to defeat the boss and several of these other characters, like these Igors here up in the upper section, although the green Igors can just be killed with a pot. Or your sword. Whatever. Here's a quick race. You just kill this Popo, and if you hit that switch, you can walk on right through. It's only a race in that you've got to get there before the anti-fairies hit you, otherwise, you know, bad things. Bad things to good people! Good people in green clothes with pink hair. There we go. Anyway, the key's what we were looking for, even though you couldn't really tell since we're in a dark room. But, that's all we need. I really like this dungeon for some reason. It's very simple, but I like how uh, interactive it is. You're constantly going over and under sections that you may or may not have seen before. Now, there's this giant fucking cluster of anti-fairies there, as you can see. Basically, you need to deal with everything in the room. Take that. I think we got one Popo left. Yep, there it goes. And once everything's dead, the anti-fairies fly around, you can hit the switch. And that gives you the big key. It is a master key, but not the master key. The source of many, many angry debates with Zelda fans who couldn't remember it was called the big key. I felt like I was crazy in it when we were playing Ocarina of Time. Anywho... So the big key not only opens Princess's doors, but it also lets you grab anything in these giant chests, which will be the treasure of the level. In this case, it's the bow. Goddamn Stalfos. Anyway, that's the second type of Stalfos we'll see. They're not really all that important, because you barely ever see them. You know what? I'm gonna try something, because I just realized these... <laughs> you know, that's really pathetic that I've never done that before. Huh. Whatever. Anyway, we've got fairies. We can go ahead and keep them in our bottle using the bug-catching net. And if it's in a bottle and you die, you'll come back to life. This is all kind of standard stuff for the Zelda series at this point, but why not? I'll just explain it anyways. Um... So yeah, this section's a little bit, not rough, just kind of annoying. Um, the door we need to go in is over there, but we're not going to go that way. Instead, we're going to head this way, because there's a whole lot of fucking money this way. Some expert anti-fairy dodging, if I do say so myself. And I do, because I self-promote. At least that's what my disc profile said. Alright. There we go. Funny that I normally remember all the button locations, but that one had to be stumped. It has been like four or five years since I've played this game, though. Okay, I'm not doing this right at all. God damn it! You die of pot, you die to arrows. You, I just don't like you. Okay, so doors open and we need to sneak across this bullet hell room. And we're good. The little symbol on the ground there does in fact mean we're getting close to the boss. And we've got our first of the red Igors. Oh my god. We're normally so easy to hit with arrows. What the fuck is going on? Anyway, the red Igors are only, uh... Blah, 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 blah. They're only vulnerable to arrows. And they take two. So yay. Oh, hell yeah. I love it when that happens. Nice. 
Alright, I'm pretty much full on everything, so I guess we'll just start the boss. So these guys are the Armos Knights. And now I'm doubting as to whether or not I called the guys outside Armos Knights, because if I did, I was fucking wrong. And they're just Armos. These are Armos Knights. This is what, uh, Sarhalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalashalash
Uh, you grab it by hitting it with the Pegasus boots, and there you go, the Book of Medora, which translates Ancient Hylian. Which looks suspiciously like a bunch of onks and gibberish. So, now that we got the book, we don't have to be over here in this section anymore, so that means we can head back over. And, to be fair, I have not actually picked up the Ice Rod yet, so we'll do that as well. Ooh, a Cherry Bomb. And I hate myself. So, this is the Lake Hylia area. It causes a whole bunch of lag and slowdown because there's way too many goddamn sprites in one area. Yay! Lake has my favorite thing, which is this little rabbit guy. I just fucking love him. Basically, if you cut out the grass from underneath the Wild Fang, he will drop whatever was on his loot table as a 100% guarantee. And he calls you a goddamn thief, which you are, for hurting such a poor and innocent wabbit. Okay. Oh, son of a bitch. Forgot. Um, which, uh, lesser of two evils. And it doesn't work, so it looks like we're going with bombs. Alright, so one of the great things about bombs is you can pick them up and throw them, which makes this not impossible. Shit! And he's going for it. Booyah! Nothing but net. And then we steal this with a boomerang. Or, fuck! Whatever, it's gone now. Well, that was fortuitous, I actually forgot there were bombs up there. And he gives us 300 rupees, which is going to put us damn near the cap. Which is 999. Oh look, arrows! Those would have been nice a few minutes ago. Alright, so one cave that's pretty much a secret to everybody down, and one cave that's not quite so secret to go. This whole section's rather dangerous. Those uh, buzz blobs will actually pretty much always seem to put themselves right in your goddamn way, so you tend to have to stop dashing around in that area. And here we go. That is, in fact, the only entrance into the Ice Shrine, Ice Rod Cave. Um, the other way will get you into this little block section, but I think it provides some fairies or a golden fairy recharge. I don't remember. Nothing, nothing fantastic. One thing you may notice is that it's always fun to jump in water because it makes you invincible. So, there's that. Also, I really hate this guy. He's referred to as an octoballoon, and he blows up into many little versions of himself, and screw him. And this is what I mean by buzz blobs actively trying to fuck you over. Since they won't get out of my way, boomerang is really the only way to rectify the situation. Anyway, we're pretty much done here. Um, on our way out, what we can do is... Oh, well, we can always just go and grab the, uh, heart piece from inside the... Forgot the name of the thing. I don't know, it's... It's like an aqueduct building... Whatever. Anyway, and one of these goddamn screens, which I can't remember, it's probably over to the left, is a solitary building sitting here in the middle of the goddamn lake. And it is very key to getting a piece of heart. And some sort of needed bombs. We'll head out and head back in real quick. Go ahead and reset those rocks. This is part of my belief that those stones are actually sentient. Or maybe all of them have those little spiders underneath. Because every time you leave a room, it goes back to normal. And we're getting out of here before the bombs drop. Damn anti-fairy. 
So that nets us another piece of hearts. And some fish, which of course you can take to the uh, guy who sold us the bottle if you want some... Was it like 50 rupees? I don't remember. I don't do it, that's why. These guys are interesting, but we'll deal with them later. Because for right now, they're not interesting. And here we have like some sort of bird creature carved into the desert. And this cave is actually the only place in the desert you can really do anything at if you are coming through your first time. So it's sort of supposed to stick out even though it's kind of out of the way. The reason being is because there's an elder in here who is not Sharasha la da di da la di da da da. And he basically tells you to go get the Book of Mordora, which we have. Sorry, got bored. And we get a heart piece. Yay. For bombs. And bombable rock walls. And rooms full of pillars. Okay, maybe that last one didn't need a yay. Anyways, we're almost done with the desert, and it's weird looking mud men who are named Guild Men. And I don't know why. Because I hope Geld means mud or dirt, but it probably doesn't. And that's what Hylian looks like. It looks like three characters, because they were too lazy to do anything with it. Anyway, grab the Book of Medora, do the same thing, and you can suddenly read it, and you can make any wish in the world, and it will be granted. So Link wishes he may, and wishes he might, have the wish he wishes tonight, which is for some stones to move. Next time, wish for the game to be over, you bastard. Anyway, this is the dungeon. And it's like 20-something minutes, so... Fuck you, Cacti, we're not doing the dungeon. Alright, that's it for this video. Next time, we'll do the Desert Palace, and it will be fantastic.